There are parts of our community that are unrecognizable after yesterday's deadly tornado. And this isn't even the only area of the state dealing with the aftermath today. Thank you for staying up with us tonight. I'm Faith Woodard. We have now learned five people have died from the storms, four in wind and another life lost in North Little Rock. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders has now requested a major disaster declaration from President Biden. We'll hear from the governor in just a few moments. This morning, we got to walk along with the National Weather Service as they surveyed the damage. Now, this is the crew who goes out right after the storms to figure out just how powerful the winds were and the track of the tornadoes. So let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Tom Brandon now. And Tom... You just got new information about the storms in the last couple of hours. That is correct, Faith. Not long ago, the National Weather Service out working hard, working diligently to uh, measure those winds and take a look at the damage. Now, this tornado has been rated as the highest end EF3 with winds of 165 miles per hour. And we're talking about the hardest hit area in West Little Rock, right around Breckenridge. Uh, the storm carved a path of 30 miles in length, beginning, uh, beginning in West Little Rock and lasting up to around Austin. Now, this is a preliminary report that I'm going to show you here in just a moment. So they're still looking at this path overall. Here is what we know currently. EF3 winds 165 miles per hour, 29.9 miles or 30 miles. That's the length. How big was this tornado? There's damage of 1.3 miles in width. So this was a big tornado. It was a strong tornado. And we have said for a number of days leading up to the situation that we would probably have to deal with strong long track tornadoes. Uh, 40 mile or 30 mile uh, path is certainly long track. Uh, began in Little Rock, Pulaski County and ended up close to Austin. And there'll be more details that will come out over the coming days. EF scale is the way we measure the winds. 165 miles per hour. Look at 166. That would make it an EF4. And I'll tell you, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they find some EF4 damage. So for now, I know that the state of Arkansas needs a few more days of sunshine and dry weather to clean up the mess. We've got temperatures tonight in the 40s and 50s and another day tomorrow with some sunshine, the high in the mid-70s. But we will talk about the next round of thunderstorms coming up next week, Faith. All right, thanks, Tom. We've been keeping an eye on the different power outages that came with this storm. And right now, there are a little over 30,000 outages across the state as teams are still working to bring power back. Outages in Pulaski and cross country are cross county are responsible for almost all of that 30,000. Meanwhile, energy pushed the estimated restoration time for Little Rock to Thursday. A spokesperson told us the weather forecast and damage is causing them to be more conservative with their estimate. Crews were out all evening restoring power. They're focusing on this area off of Napa Valley Drive, which includes several apartment complexes that were devastated. Now, due to the apartments being in a hilly area, special equipment was brought in today. Energy also has crews arriving from across the region. More than 3,000 linemen are working around the clock. We have had crews out working anything you can imagine, whether it's cutting down tree limbs that have fallen, replacing power poles, stretching new power lines. We've had boots on the ground again for about 24 hours now. Energy says they appreciate everyone's patience. There are a lot of down power lines, power poles, and even snap towers. According to Energy, it can take hours for linemen to restore a single power pole or transmitter. And now we turn to the rebuild. When the sun came up, Arkansas toured the damage along with our governor, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. We were there along the way with the governor and other city and state officials who talked about those working to clean up. THB 11, Dean Russell and Frederick Price are both live around Central Arkansas tonight. We're going to check in with Ian first tonight. Ian, what is the latest? Yeah, well, the governor obviously got to see a couple different areas around central Arkansas this morning and this afternoon. And unfortunately, a lot of them look just like this one. We're on West Little Rock over here at Little Rock Fire Station number nine. I mean, the storm just 
rip this apart. This is a brick building. You can see the power of that high-end EF3, like Tom mentioned, just ripped down this brick. It bent that uh, that metal pole on that basketball hoop. I mean, we're talking a strong storm, like Tom mentioned, just to come through here and just rip this all apart. And obviously hitting close to home for the firemen who were here in the, the neighborhood that's just down the road there that is completely pitch black tonight as they have no power in a lot of those homes are damaged, but it did also hit close to home for the governor as well because one of the homes that she toured seeing that damage was a member of her staff. As the sun rose on the aftermath, images straight out of a movie are now reality. Uh, well, we deem to believe at least 2,100 residents within the western portions of Little Rock and southwestern portion of Little Rock were impacted. And as residents toured the damage, so too did some of Central Arkansas's elected officials including Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders. This group represents uh, all of central Arkansas and Little Rock, this area that was hit so hard, and uh, very thankful for their willingness and the cooperation that we've had. Her morning started at Little Rock Fire Station 9, heavily damaged in the storm. Despite the fact that they had a tornado literally coming through their station, we're worried about the community. That tells you who they are, and it tells you, I think, a lot about our state. This neighborhood off Shackleford raised. The biggest thing, like I was telling y'all, is we gotta get the streets clear. But the power is a big thing. Power is uh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be very trying. It joining many, like this neighborhood in North Little Rock, also destroyed trees on homes. X's mark the damage. The governor joining North Little Rock Mayor Terry Hartwick touring damage too close for comfort. This is uh, the home of one of the staffers in our office. And um, sorry, he found out that it happened as he was sitting in our conference room responding to the storm. So we are so thankful they weren't here, that they're okay. And we're just here to help and uh, be there for them in any way we can. Clean up in these neighborhoods will take weeks, if not months, crews and neighbors all lending a helping hand and the governor promising they won't be alone. It's real simple. Whatever you need, we're going to come and provide it. Um, if it's a temporary shelter, if it's food, if it's clothing, we're coming together, we're going to work together, and we're going to make sure that the people have what they need. All right, you heard the governor mention there, food, clothing, shelter, whatever people need, she says they're going to step in and help them. She emphasized to me when we spoke this afternoon, people, not paperwork. They're really focusing on people as they readjust to this, as they get their feet back under them. Obviously, this process may take a little bit as that recovery effort gets underway. So in the meantime, we're going to link to a lot of resources right now over on our website, thv11.com. Faith, we'll send it back to you. All right, Ian, thanks you. Now, one of the hardest hit areas of the storm was wind in eastern Arkansas. Four people were killed after a tornado there. Jay Shakur was at the city's high school as officials plan what's next for the school year. Here in Wynn, Arkansas, about 50 minutes west of Memphis, those storms yesterday did severe damage. I'll step out of the way so you can see the school from ground level first. This is what's left of Wynn High School. Now, for context, this is one of two public high schools in all of Cross County, but this is the only high school in the entirety of the Wynn School District. As you can see, trees are completely collapsed, but crews are out working now, picking up debris and restoring power lines. Now, in an aerial view, most of the roof is torn to pieces. The front main entrance is completely caved in. The big question now from staffers who drove by surveying the school's damage is what's next for students? Will they go online or will they have another building available, another facility available to accommodate these students? This town of Wynn has a population of about 8,300 people, multiple injuries and multiple deaths so far. In Wynn, Arkansas, I'm Jay Shakur. Thanks, Jay. Frederick Price continuing our team coverage this evening live from Jacksonville. Frederick, you've been there all afternoon long, seeing the damage firsthand and talking to people. How are they moving forward following this devastating tornado? Well, Faith, Jacksonville, not the only area that we've hit up. We visited communities in Sherwood and Cabot, and the story there is more or less the same as it is here in Jacksonville. A lot of damage. We're on Oak Street and someone's front yard a tree as you can see behind me has fallen on a home and that really just shows how powerful these winds were uh today the story really is just cleaning up and focusing on moving forward after that powerful storm wreaked havoc on this community the focus more than 24 hours after a violent tornado ravaged parts of central arkansas is cleaning up we just made sure that we 
boarded the window up and uh, we're covering the roof over top. Johnny Hills is the pastor of Christ Center Fellowship Church in Jacksonville. And we do have uh, quite a bit of roof damage. The storm's also leaving a mess of debris on the front lawn. Sunday morning services, Johnny says, won't be happening. Quentin and Joe Lauer were home together with their three kittens when the weather turned violent Friday. In August, we would have lived in this house 45 years. And it hit so fast that we really didn't even have time to be afraid. And much like everyone in the path of this storm, their work is cut out for them. People in this community out much of Saturday clearing yards and getting some personal belongings inside their homes. Crews also working to clear roads and restore electricity to those who lost it. Ask anyone from a small town in Arkansas. In times of tragedy, the community wastes no time making sure their fellow neighbor as well. Today is helping the community day. Which is what Pastor Kerry Rosenbaum and members of the Bethel Assembly Church did on Saturday. So we're just handing out supplies, tarps, water bottles, cleaning supplies, things to help people get through the next several days. Now, Frederick, we've seen chopper video of the damage in that area. What else is the city doing right now to help people with all of the debris all over that area? Yeah, Faith, in that chopper video, pretty extensive. Uh, the debris, like tree limbs and trucks and uh, uh, just debris that's scattered over. They're saying that you can push them on the roadway and uh, Jacksonville Public Works Department workers will come and pick them up. Though they say when you push them out, don't push them and block the roadway because they need to keep it clear for emergency workers or those uh, utility crews that need to come and restore power or, or restore any other utility services. But really just an ongoing effort in this community in Jacksonville to really clear clean up and uh, get things going. All right. Thank you so much, Frederick. And we're starting to get a better idea of the severity of the damage left behind by yesterday's tornado. This is exclusive chopper video of the Colony West area just off of Rodney Parham. Now, we've seen pictures from the Kroger there, but this is the view from above. And as you can see, the shopping center there was hit hard, as well as Breckenridge Village and neighborhoods surrounding the area. Now, we also have chopper video from the Chanel area where churches, businesses, and homes were hit by the tornado. Officials believe the storm's tracks started not from far from here near Candace Road, and that's one of the areas Entergy is focused on their effort to restore power in central Arkansas. And that chopper was able to capture destruction in North Little Rock as well. After tearing through Little Rock, the tornado made its way across the river you're looking at an area around MacArthur Drive and Military Drive. Now, a volunteer staging area was set earlier this morning in North Little Rock at the Cash Shavers on Camp Robinson. Many looking to help were deployed to the hardest hit areas. Journey Taylor has the latest from Indian Hills. It's hard. It's hard. I, you know, I was in shock. It's a new day, but the pain is still being felt. Brenda Goodson has lived at the corner of Osage in Pontiac in North Little Rock for the last 29 years, a place where she raised her family. I'm alive. My daughter's alive. We found all our pets. All oh, this doesn't really matter. All these people, most of them I don't know, and um, I, I just appreciate the help. Many have no clue what's next for their homes and lives, but today, trusting and leaning hard on their community. And even for those not directly impacted, like Pastor Chopper Ward of Rock City Church in Sherwood and his congregation, he says this is the time to show what works of faith truly means. And I believe what the enemy meant for evil, God's going to turn for good. So this is an opportunity for the church to either put up or shut up. So we say one thing behind the pulpit, but this is a time when we really get to act like the church. Volunteers coming from near and far and even helping in communities they've known all of their lives. It is emotional. It is hard to see because you know, I grew up here. I know this area and these are real people and they're having real experiences. The ones here today, tomorrow and the days to follow understanding that the biggest help at times is not always physical. We'll be going out and assessing damage uh, in the area, talking with these residents about what you know, kind of support we can give them. It could be anything from uh, spiritual to mental to medical needs if they've lost medicines, if they've lost any of their medical equipment, and financial needs uh, as, as they become available. Jeremy Taylor, THV 11 News.
Journey, thank you. We've had so many of you reaching out to us around the clock asking how you can help those impacted by the storms. Because of this, we set up a link to make it easy. 